Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and Spider-Man No Way Home rewrote the rules of the MCU and the Spider-Verse in all kinds of ways. Spoiler warning if you haven't seen the film yet, but one of the most curious surprises was the way Peter Parker's spider sense works now, exactly. In addition to some cinematically tense depictions of Peter's dread more than we've seen in the MCU yet, when Doctor Strange pushes Peter's astral soul from his physical body, Peter continues to instinctively move that box away from Strange's grasp, totally bewildering the sorcerer. How does Peter do that? Could he always do that? What changed? Let's break down the full history of Peter Parker's spider sense and really get inside of Peter's tingle. Nah, I'm not crazy about that phrasing. And if you're also curious about this entanglement, you gotta check out our new limited edition Strange Entanglement shirt that you can get at NewRockStarsMerch.com. Okay, Spider-Man's spider sense is a classic component to his power set. The ability to psychically detect danger moments before it comes, allowing him to evade and duck attacks, annoying the crap out of his bigger and more powerful powerful foes. The Tobey Maguire era of Spider-Man depicted it via Sam Raimi's macro photography in Peter's fight with Flash, and in the final act of that movie when he sensed Green Goblin's glider and evaded it last second. Oh. The MCU reboot of Peter Parker at first focused less on Peter's spider sense. He demonstrated some sharp reflexes catching the web fluid in Civil War, and he had a similar glider move while fighting the Vulture in Homecoming. Then Infinity War showed the hairs on Peter's arms standing up when he sensed danger in the beginning of the movie, and then at the end of the film, Peter sensed his own dusting moments earlier than everyone else. I don't feel so good. You're all right. I don't, I don't know what's happening. But then Far From Home gave Peter's spider sense more weight to the story. Hungry? So sorry. I thought that you could sense that with your Peter Tingle. So what's up? You can dodge bullets, but not bananas. I need a break. See, after the trauma of getting snapped and then blipped back, something the MCU explores again from the perspective of Monica Rambeau and Yelena Belova, Peter had numbed his spider sense. So he failed to see Mysterio as a threat until he was able to regain the Tingle while fighting the drones blind on Tower Bridge and stopping a Mysterio who was invisible to him from shooting him in the head. But now Spider-Man No Way Home puts Peter's spider sense in the forefront. Director John Watt uses recurring dolly zoom shots with a similar horror sting sound effect. First when Peter senses Doc Ock, and then again when Green Goblin arrives. Really the most chilling spider sense sequence is in Happy Hogan's condo as Peter senses Osborne's betrayal and then May's death. And then in the final battle, all three Spider-Men simultaneously sense the coming threat at the Statue of Liberty. This whole evolution was to give us a bigger context to the super mysterious depiction of Peter's spider sense when Doctor Strange pushes Peter's astral soul from his body, and despite his detachment, Peter's physical body continues to dodge Strange one step ahead of him, and you can actually see some wavy lines shooting out from Peter's head in the astral dimension, just like the way Spider-Sense is depicted in the comics. This confuses even Peter, who has never been in the astral dimension before this, but he says this feels amazing, which is not the kind of euphoric rush that Strange or Bruce Banner felt when they were in their astral forms, and also unlike their first times, Peter's soul can swim back to his physical body, this novice skill that Peter shows here is honestly a bit closer to Wanda Maximoff's mastery with astral projection and the WandaVision post credit scene where she's able to split her consciousness to search the dark hold at the same time her physical self is brewing some tea. This tells us something new about Peter's spider sense, that it is actually fed by a kind of magic that comes from the multiverse. I know, I know, Spider-Man No Way Home just gave us the perfect holiday gift and I think we need a way to celebrate the magnitude of this occasion well, our merch partners at Epic Hero are stepping up to release the biggest shirts of the year. Not like in size, but you know, in like, uh, they're a big deal. I'm very important. My apartment smells of rich mahogany. <laughs> they have multiple new shirt designs inspired by No Way Home. Strange Entanglement is the newest member of their limited edition latest obsession line. It looks so cool. They also have a new spider polo, the spiritual successor to their mega hit Loki Gator polo. It's a perfect gift for the nerd who likes to break up the t-shirt rotation with an occasional collared shirt. You know, it gives, it gives some structure to, to this undefined, unknown region. But there's also a sick Sinister Six shirt in the style of the Usual Suspects movie poster. And of course, way more Spidey merch on the way. Really, they have all kinds of shirts and hoodies and stickers, other merch inspired by Loki, Shang-Chi, other properties, including a new Kingpin-inspired shirt. 
Long live the king! Celebrating Wilson Fisk's return to the MCU in Hawkeye. And of course, there's also official new Rockstars merch with our logo, in some cases with my name. If you ever see me in public and you're wearing one of these, I am legally required to high five you. So what you gotta do is sign up for their newsletter at the bottom of their website to get notified about the latest merch drops and check out all of their incredible products at epicheroshop.com. Be your own hero. Peter's multiverse-fueled Spider-Sense was established in recent Marvel comics. In Spider-Verse number one by Jed McKay, Miles Morales learns that his Spider-Sense is actually called Arachnofrequency, and it comes from the web of life and destiny, the cosmic force that connects all spider entities across time and space in the Spider-Verse. It's what gives all spider heroes their instinctive perception of their worlds and oncoming threats. Now, I don't know if the live-action MCU or Sony films will actually ever use the term Arachnofrequency, since lately they seem reluctant and even call it spider sense though the upcoming animated spider-man across the spider-verse may feel more comfortable with a comic booky lexicon either way this explains the new functionality in no way home it is because of peter's alternate reality selves toby mcguire peter andrew garfield peter have crossed into this reality due to the magic of dr strange's spell and crossed the wires with tom holland peter's unique spider sense that heightened it in a way that amplified his soul in the astral dimension in this moment like various nodes of a spider web interlocking with each other, the more nodes there are, the more powerful they all are collectively. This also explains the uncanny link among the three Peters throughout the film. The way they complete each other's sentences. Yeah, you know. The way they serve as empaths for each other's grief. The way they actually feel each other's physical pain, like with Toby's tense back, and when Andrew knows Toby's pain from Goblin's stab wound. And when Goblin swipes Tom Holland Peter from catching MJ, Andrew Garfield Peter instinctively is right there thanks to his sharpened and amplified arachnofrequency that he shares with his brother. But the question that remains is how much Toby and Andrew were already aware of this multiverse magic. Because they both seemed a bit thrown by their crossovers. Yeah, Andrew started babbling about string theory. Ned and MJ did find them a day after they had adjusted to being in a new reality. But Andrew and Toby, the moment they see each other, immediately thwip attack each other before they realize that they can actually trust each other, as if both of them had been attacked by variant Peters in the past. Also, Andrew asks, magic's real here too? Which is an interesting line considering in his two films, the fantastical elements were very much grounded in sci-fi and engineering. And then when they see Doctor Strange, rather than marveling at a freaking wizard, they both berate the guy for visiting the Grand Canyon. Now sure, this could be just some amusing banter that's common among MCU final battles, but I bring it up because in Toby's continuity, there is an alternate Doctor Strange in that universe, according to J. Jonah Jameson in Spider-Man 2 in 2004. What are we gonna call this guy? Doctor Octopus. That's yeah, crap. Uh, uh, Science Squid? Crap. Doctor Strange. That's pretty good but it's taken. Now, these used to just be jokey references that we could shrug off, but no longer. Spider-Man No Way Home deliberately ties in specific dialogue, specific production design oddities from the past eras now as official multiverse canon. No Way Home invited us to speculate on the lives these two Peters lived after we left them in 2007 and in 2014. And things like magic, the multiverse, and a spider sense that connects all Peters, as well as Miles Morales and Gwen Stacy, is something that we are about to explore a lot more. And you can celebrate this new era with our new Strange Entanglement shirt at NewRockStarsMerch.com. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EAVoss. Follow NewRockStars. Subscribe to NewRockStars for more analysis of everything Marvel. Thanks for watching. Bye.